He is risen. Some phrases should be said many times. And uh, that one is the one with all the hope for us this morning. I'm so excited to talk to you about the fact that our Savior has been lifted up this morning. And the joy comes in understanding how high He has been lifted up. Um, Just last week, I got the opportunity to go with my son Jake and our family, and we went to a college visit down in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, we did that for a day and a half, and then uh, we had a little time to spare, so we went down to um, the riverfront, which uh, the Ohio River runs right through there, and uh, we went to this place called Waterfront Park. And my wife, Kim, had told me that there was this bridge that you could walk over the entire Ohio River. And I thought, well, that sounds interesting. So we get there, and I'm looking for, like, a walking bridge, and I don't see anything. And all of a sudden, my eyes go up, and there's this giant railroad truss bridge that's easily 100 feet up in the air. And I look up at this thing, and I can see these little tiny ant people walking across this thing and instantly like the inner child of me is like I'm like oh we got to get up on that that's awesome but but I'm looking and from the angle we pulled in like the railroad bridge it goes all the way across the river but right as it goes across the river it stops and it just cuts off and I was like how do people get up on that thing I mean is there an elevator or what well we pull in and we start walking towards it and then all of a sudden I see it So this bridge has an on-ramp, like a walking on-ramp, only it's like 900 feet long, and I'm not exaggerating. It's 20, 25 feet wide, and it's this giant thing, and it swings out underneath the bridge, and it does this giant loop, taking you all the way up to the top. Well, we get on this thing, and I'm just like, oh my good i'm geeking out my kids are getting embarrassed because i'm starting to say dumb dad stuff (laughs) like i lean back at my daughter and i'm like we're still going up you know i'm like this is awesome we're still climbing and you know climb all the way up to the top of this thing it was it was so much fun but the reason i are silly about that this morning is that friends are you glad that jesus is alive this morning the question is where is he alive this morning You see, the resurrection is an awesome truth, but hope explodes inside the heart of a Christian and a believer when you realize just how high Jesus has been lifted up. He has not just conquered sin and death. He is not just alive. He has been exalted, the Bible says, to the highest place. In John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, we read the Scripture. It says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up, so that whoever believes in Him will have eternal life. If you were with us on uh, Good Friday, we talked about how Jesus and a man by the name of Nicodemus had a conversation by night. Nicodemus was a teacher of the law, and he was con- Jesus just bent his head. He, he literally did not know what to do with this prophet, but he realized this man's from God, and, and he had questions about the kingdom of heaven, and what was salvation, and what was Jesus' whole point. Well, Jesus begins to interact with him and says something that just leaves Nicodemus confused. He says, you must be born again. Now, how many of you are good church kids? You've been around churches your whole life. You know, some of you not so, that's fine. How many of you have heard the phrase, born again? How many of you have heard it 150 times? Now imagine you were the person who heard it for the first time. What, what, what? Born again. And Nicodemus has that reaction. He's like, what do you mean by that? He goes, "I, I... I can't climb back in my mom's womb. What are you talking about? And, and, and he's, And then Jesus goes on and says, no, you must be born of water and the Spirit. Well, Nicodemus is a good student of the law. He understands terminology. The minute Jesus said you must be born of water, Nicodemus would know Jesus was saying you must be washed of something. 
Something about you must be cleansed so that you can be born of the Spirit of God. Nicodemus is trying to track this whole conversation. All right, got to be born again. Somehow that means I must be cleansed of something and born alive by the Spirit. What are you talking about? And then Jesus gets to this passage and He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of Man must be lifted up. And then it's beginning to register with Nicodemus that Jesus is talking about something that is incurable. Because in the book of Numbers 21, the Israelites had rebelled against God and they had sinned. And because of that, God had sent fiery serpents into the camp. That basically means venomous snakes. And everybody who was bit, there was no anti-venom. So the minute you were bit, you were dead. And you were dying. And they cried out to God for deliverance. And Moses, uh, God told Moses, Moses, I want you to make this serpent and I want you to put it on a pole and lift it up in the, in the midst of the camp. And what happened is that everyone who looked at that snake, that serpent, and believed that it was God's provision, they were immediately healed. So Jesus says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, if you want to be born again, if you want to experience eternal life, then you must look at God's provision for sin that has been lifted up for you on the cross. And everyone who looks to Him by faith will have eternal life. Amen? To be lifted up means to be crucified. It means that Jesus was lifted up on the cross. Someone had to pay the penalty for sin, and the only thing that could do it was the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the only thing that has the power to cleanse us from sin. Do you believe this, church? Well, guess what? Lifted up means more than just on a cross. It means more than just crucified. In fact, today... Lifted up, what I want you to understand is it's a word meaning exalted. it's It's a comprehensive term. It means more than one thing. It's comprehensively saying something is lifted up, enhanced. And here's just a bit of truth. Did you know that before time began, from eternity, God's plan was for His Son Jesus to be lifted up? but not just lifted up on a cross. The the plan of redemption was in the heart of God before one Adam was created. Because it brings Him glory, but He knew that in glorifying Himself, He was going to glorify His Son, Jesus Christ. So He says, I'm not just going to lift you up as the ultimate picture of grace and love and sacrifice for all of humanity. I am going to lift you up over their greatest enemy. I'm going to lift you up over death itself which is always the consequence of sin and i'm not just going to lift you up over death and i'm going to raise you to newness of life i am then going to exalt you even further in isaiah chapter 52 we read behold my servant will prosper he will be high and lifted up and greatly exalted here is the problem friends with the religiosity of our world Many people acknowledge the cross of Jesus Christ. Have you ever seen somebody wear a little cross on their chain? Do you ever wonder what that means to them? I remember one time being cussed out while this huge gold cross was dangling. And I thought, hmm, this seems strange, you know. Let me just let me have it, you know. And they, so, so here's the problem is that Easter doesn't stop At the cross. Friends, it is wonderful that Christ sacrifices Himself for our sin. But if you stop at the cross, you've missed it. If you were to go over today to the Italian Alps, there's a very famous hike that you can take, and it's called the Stations of the Cross. And you can begin hiking up a mountainside, and you come to all these places that have these little shrines kind of commemorating what happened during the Passion Week. You know, and you, the shrine of the prayer Jesus prays in the garden. You know, and the shrine, uh, you know, talking about His, his beating uh, and His trial before Pontius Pilate. And then if you hike up far enough, you eventually get to the shrine of the cross. 
there was a journalist who hiked up to that place, and he was going around it, and all of a sudden he noticed that beyond that there was a trail that was heading up still. Only it was overgrown, and it was obvious that nobody really ever went up there. So he decides, I'm going to go investigate that. He hikes up the hill, and lo and behold, he finds himself, there's another shrine, and the shrine is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you stop at the cross, you lose. The cross is the center of our faith, but the validation that it did what God said it would do is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Four times in John's Gospel, he'll use this term, lifted up. And every time it's a comprehensive term that means to enhance, to lift up to the highest place. And in this case, friends, you need to know that John had in mind the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. How many of you know that the resurrection is absolutely essential to your hope? It is so much greater than we understand. For so many of us, it means that Jesus is alive, so maybe I can be alive, or, or sin's paid for it. But when you think about it comprehensively, do you understand that it is the resurrection that proves that Jesus is who He claimed to be? Romans 1.4 Who was declared the Son of God with power by the resurrection from the dead. Friends, if all Jesus is, is a good man, then He is dead somewhere today. But if He is the Son of God, with the power of an eternal life that you can read about in the book of Hebrews, who has the authority to lay down His life and has the authority to take it up again because of who He is and because He's fully man, can shed His blood and be the sacrifice for our sins, then Jesus, if He is raised, is the very Son of God, the infinite Lamb of God, God of very gods who spoke the universe into existence, who holds all things together by the word of His might. That is who raised to newness of life for you. Amen? Jesus is who He claimed to be. You know what else the resurrection proves? This is glorious. It proves that sin's paid for. How many of you are glad your sins are paid for? Oh, friend. Which one of us could stand under the weight of our own brokenness? I love what it says in Luke chapter 24. This is what is written, Jesus told them. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations. Friends, it is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead that lets us tell anyone your sins can be forgiven. It is the only proof that God has embraced Jesus' sacrifice and counted it. This final one is so beautiful. It is the proof that death doesn't win. Can we say amen to that? How many of you have lost someone? There's a lady who began attending our church right before COVID and then has just now come back. She just was part of our new members class. Her name's Barb Wesselhoff. And her son, I mean her husband Tom passed away. And uh, right before he did, I didn't even know, this was within hours of him passing away, Barb called me and said, hey, Pastor, could you come over? And I got to go over and I got to pray with Tom. Now the thing was, I couldn't believe he was so close to death and so alert. And when I walked up to his bedside, I looked at him and he was, he's curled up on the bed and he looks at me and he has this intense look on his face and I said, Tom, are you ready? These were, this is exactly how it came. I'm ready! I said, Tom, are you ready to live? You are getting ready to live. Three hours later, he was with Jesus. Tom's alive this morning. Someday, because of Christ, we're going to be alive. Amen? Here's the thing. The resurrection is the guarantee that everything that you fear in this life, you don't have to. 
Some of us are so afraid we're never going to outlast our own broken. How many of you worried you're never going to mature? I'm never going to arrive. Or, and then there's this looming out in the distance, the knowledge that someday I'm not going to breathe and, and this is going to come to an end and we fight against it and we're afraid of it. And boy, COVID, did it not expose the nerve of our society right now? The terror that you might die and, and, and there's no... And what? I love... There was a, there was a gal who went to a, a, a cemetery and she was there and standing in front of a grave and then all of a sudden something captured her attention. There was this little girl like six, six years old, skipping through the graveyard. And it just threw her. And she said, oh, hey, honey, come here, come here. So aren't you, aren't you scared to be in a graveyard by yourself? The little girl's like, no. Why not? She goes, you see that house just on the other side? That's my house. My house is right there. Friends, what's right there for us? The the fact is that everything this world can throw at us is swallowed up by the fact that the very consequence of sin is death, but the guarantee that death does not win is that Jesus Christ is not dead. Amen? And if He is alive, then there is hope beyond all of the things that would come into your life right now that would accuse you, that would cause you to fear and be afraid and have guilt and all these things. I love what Romans 8, 34 says. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is He who died. Yes, rather, who was raised, who is right now at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. You know what? Easter is for Christians. It's permission for us to stand there, look at this world, and go, bring it. Bring it on. Oh, I don't even have the strength to stand against you. In and of myself, I'm hiding under a rock. But do you know who I've been attached to? Do you know who is my Savior? Do you know where He hangs out? Friends, To be lifted up, to be exalted, means the resurrection. But that doesn't even capture it all, because to be exalted also means glorification. And this is where this gets fun. Friends, Jesus was not just exalted up above the grave. It means that He was exalted up into glory. And if Jesus has been exalted up into the highest place, friends, that is massively important because it means He has authority over everything underneath Him. Ephesians chapter 1. Listen to this verse. It's so good. Beginning in verse 18. And this is Paul, the apostle, and he's praying for you and he's praying for me this morning. This is what he prays. I pray that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. He's literally praying, I pray that the scales of doubt and fear and condemnation would just fall off of your eyes. So that what? So that you will know what is the hope of His calling. What are the riches of His glory and the glory of His inheritance in the saints. And listen to this. And what is the surpassing greatness of His power towards us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of His might, which He brought about in Christ. Listen to this. When He raised Him from the dead and seated Him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule, all authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. What does that mean? How high is up? That's where up ends. That's where Jesus sits. That is the height of all heights of authority and power and dominion and glory. And because He has been raised to that place, Christian, do you understand what the power of salvation is? 
We think about Jesus and His work and His resurrection. And, and sometimes we put this great distance, you know, like Jesus saves me and He's over there saving me. And he, he, he raises from the dead and someday I'll get to do that too. And we don't understand what salvation is. The Apostle Paul made it very clear. When you and I look to the cross and by faith, believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, that He died and shed His blood for me, then Christ takes His life, and this is what salvation is, and He gives me His life. This life doesn't raise anywhere. Jesus' life cannot be contained by death or sin because He has paid it and He's overcome it. So what does it mean to be saved? It means to be found in Him. It means to have the life of Christ within you. To be made alive in Him. And if Jesus Christ's life has taken Him to the heights of heaven, then where am I going if I'm in Him? You want to know the shock of Christianity today, Christians? Is that I get what Jesus gets. Amen? Back in 1992... I came to the city of Chicago for the very first time. I was coming from Fallon, Nevada, which the tallest building on the one main street is four stories tall. And I show up in Chicago, and I did a lot of this. You know, just, wow, big city, and I hadn't seen it. And I remember shortly after arriving there for college, me and a couple guys from my dorm, we went down to the John Hancock building, and we were going to go up on the observation deck. I was pretty excited about this because I was like, wow, 100 stories up. And a lot of people were doing it that day. And they were taking us into those elevators by groups, if you've ever done it. And there was an attendant who went in. And, and we kind of packed in. And there was this family had a bunch of small kids with them. And they, uh, they got in the elevator. And this was a, I never forgot this moment because the door shut. And this little boy goes and he goes right up to the attendant. He goes, how high are we going? And, you know, you're waiting for the technical, well, we'll be 100 stories up to John Hancock, you know. But this guy, this older gentleman, he gets down like this and he goes, all the way. And this kid's eyes just get big and he turns. And I was standing right there. His mom's here, I'm here. He turns and he looks over and he goes, whoa. <laughs> whoa, we're going all the way. Whoa. What is the resurrection? It's a bunch of you standing in this room and we're all going, whoa! How high are we going? All the way. Some of you feel like because of your lives and your struggle with sin and the weakness of your life, how many of you would be glad to just get two steps beyond the door of heaven? I mean, I sometimes feel like that. I'm going to get in, scoot to the side. Yay, made it. Woo. No. Your life is with Him. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again that you may be with me. The shock of all shocks, friends, is I am not just going to live beyond death. I will be in the presence of the living God. And the only reason I will be there and not incinerated is my life will be hid in His. And the glory of heaven will be treat, being treated for eternity by the Father like He loves His Son. I will be loved that way. That's what it means to live. Amen? That's what it means to live. Exalted means glorified. Jesus was lifted up, and that means exalted. But if we go on to this last verse, lifted up also equals for us. John 3.15 says, So that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. What a powerful statement. Friends, Jesus Christ was lifted up so that we might be lifted up. He did this so that we would be with Him and be with Him forever. Um, what this means is that Easter and lifted up is for those who believe. What I love about this is it doesn't say Easter is for all the pretty people. Amen? Easter is for all the people who figured it out, who got their life together and got this all going on. You know, you're good enough. No. 
It just says, He was lifted up for whoever will believe. That means that anyone in this room or listening to me this morning, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what your past is. It doesn't matter what you're trying to do in the future. The question is simply this, will you believe? God's heart in 2 Peter 3.9 says that He is not wishing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. Friends, Jesus Christ has overcome death and the grave for you. And He wants you to come to Him by faith. It's for whoever will believe. But understand this well. Friends, Easter is only for those who believe. It's for whoever will believe, but it is only for those who believe. Friends, here's the crazy thing, is that we live in an age that likes to define its own morality and norms and define everything and and be the sole determiner uh, of truth and all those things. And and to any person who thinks that they can just map their own way to heaven, you want to say... Have you shed your blood on a tree and your blood was absolutely perfect and it satisfied a holy God? No? I wouldn't trust your plan then. That won't do it. John 14, 6, Jesus said to them, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Friends, Easter is for anyone who will believe but it is for only those who believe. Only those who put their faith in Christ. And here's the promise. For those who believe, they will be lifted up. I love what it says. So that whoever believes in Him will have eternal life. Everlasting life. There were three friends who were out in a fishing boat and the fishing was not good that morning. And so they were killing time, talking, and uh, one of the, the guys comes up with this thought. He goes, hey, you know, what do you want people to say about you at your funeral? Got nothing else to do, so they start divesting themselves into that question, and they, uh, the, <laughs> the first guy thinks about it a little while, and he says, you know, I'd really like him to say he was a great humanitarian. Like, he really really helped his community. Well, that's, that's nice. And the second guy, after he thought about it a little while, he goes, you know, I'd really like them to say he was a great husband and father. Like, I, like he really loved his family. And the third guy thinks about it for a little while, and then he gets this little smirk on his face. He says, I know what I'd like them to say. Look, he's moving! That's like borderline dad joke, but it's so good. Can I tell you guys something? I don't want to die. Any of you like me? I don't want to die. I want to be moving when my heart stops. How about you? I can't do that on my own. I'm a fallen, sinful man. And I can't do that. The only way that that can be true would to be have my life be attached to one who was perfect and who paid the penalty out of His perfection in full. And whose perfection and sacrifice were so radically atoning that the God of the universe would look upon that one and say, I accept your sacrifice. And the proof of it would be that the very thing that I am condemned to experience death, that He would overcome death. And He would overcome it in such a way that He could never die again. And then all my hope would be not just being attached to this one in name. I would actually have to share the very life of that one. 
I would have to have his life in me so that when that moment came that this shell gives out and I stopped breathing, that that life could never be kept in the grave and I would be raised to wherever he was. You know, salvation's a little bit like the elevator in the John Hancock building. And some of you are just like me. How many imperfect people here this morning? How many of you know what it is to be afraid that the curtain will be pulled back and just how weak you are would actually be seen? And that is the one who Jesus died for. And he has invited you into his life. He's, he's the elevator. And, and salvation was that moment when you realized that I cannot go there. I don't have the, I'm a weak little child. I got nothing in the tank to get me to heaven. And yet Jesus says, come to me. Follow me. Be mine. And by faith you did. And did you ever feel like in salvation you were the little kid and you step into the middle of this? And it's all so impossible. How many of you are having a hard time with holy? Anybody else? How can it be that God's going to get this there? And in a fearful voice, you and I, at some point this year, walk over to Jesus. How high are we going, Lord? And he got down on his knees. And he pulls you into a bear hug. And he whispers in your ear, all the way. Amen? Amen. Romans 8.30 says this, And these whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. There is no halfway salvation, friends. If Jesus Christ is yours today, then you are going all the way up. Amen? He is risen. Let's pray. Father, all our hope is in Christ this morning. Like those children of Israel, we would look today at the cross and believe that our sin has been paid for. But we would also look at the empty grave, God, and believe with all our heart that our Savior lives. And that our life now, if we have believed, is found in Him. And God, He has been exalted and glorified and because He has gone up beyond the grave and because our lives are now in Him, God, we too will live. Oh God, I pray that if there is one in this room today who does not have this faith, their faith in You, God, oh Lord, would You set them free to come to the God who loves them who died for them, who lives and has the power to forgive the guilt of their life, their sin, and to promise them life beyond the grave. God, if that person is here, would they just cry out to you right now in a simple, humble prayer and say, Oh, Jesus, I'm looking to you alone. Rescue me. God, you promise the one who looks to you in faith will have everlasting life. God, I love that this passage is followed by John 3, 16. That you so loved the world, you gave your only begotten Son, God, that whoever believes in you will have everlasting life. Lord, that is our hope today. We love you. And all God's people said, Amen.